Like any good programming tutorial, now that we've got some terminology and environment set up out of the way, we're ready to jump in and write a Hello World test. Hello World exercises are a great way to learn about how tests are discovered by Drupal and to demonstrate the bare minimum requirements to get our tests to run. In this lesson, we'll be expanding upon a simple Hello World module to add our first test case, looking at some of the documentation for a simple test, and finally, running our first custom test. If you want to follow along, you can grab a copy of the code for the Hello World module that we'll be starting with attached to this page. After completing this lesson, you should be able to write a new test case class that extends the Drupal web test case, have Drupal find your new test case, and be able to run your tests. We can start by taking a look at the Hello World module, which we're going to be writing a test for. I've got the module downloaded already. It's in my Sites All Modules custom directory. You can grab a copy of the code from this page that the video is attached to uh, if you would like to follow along. There is a Hello World.info file, which is the standard Drupal info file name, description, and version of Drupal core that our module is compatible with. And then in the Hello World.module file, there's just a little bit of code, an implementation of hook menu, which creates a menu item at the URL, hello world, and calls our page callback, hello world, hello page. If I look at that function, I can see that it's returning a string of text. The text says, hello world, welcome to Drupal. So this module is going to provide us with a page that we can navigate to at a URL that contains this content. One of the things that I really like to do when writing tests is try and walk through the steps in my browser first so I can get an idea of what it is that I'm going to be asking simple tests to do for me. Since most tests in Drupal are functional tests, they're really just simulating the same things that I would do clicking around in my browser. So let's do that. If I switch over to our site in my browser, with the Hello World module enabled, I now have a item in the navigation menu on the left hand side that reads hello world. I can click on that text and it takes me to a page at the URL slash hello world that contains the content hello world welcome to Drupal. So what I'd like to do is simulate navigating to this page. For our use case we'll just simulate navigating to this page by typing the URL directly into the browser. Once the page is loaded I want to confirm that this string of text Hello world, welcome to Drupal, appears on the page. In simple test terms, I'm going to assert that this text is present, and if it is, I'll pass the test, and if it's not, I'll fail the test. Let's switch back to our editor and start writing a test. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a file that will hold our new test class. So inside of the hello world module, I'm going to create a subdirectory named tests. And inside of that subdirectory, I'm going to create a file and I'll name it hello world.test. And this is just a PHP file. The name of the file isn't really important. The .test extension isn't necessarily even required, though it is considered best practice. And the convention in Drupal is any file that contains a test class ends with a .test extension. If my module only has one test class or one file that contains all of my test cases, I'll just name it my module, module name, .test. In order for Drupal to know about the content of this file and load it when is necessary, I need to declare this file in my modules.info file. So in hello world.info, I'm going to add a new line, files square brackets equals tests hello world.test, like so. This allows Drupal to locate the file tests slash hello world.test and know that it contains one or more classes. That way, in the future, when Drupal needs to instantiate a copy of that class, it will know where to look without me having to load the file manually. Back in our .test file, we're going to need to create a new class. Each test case in SimpleTest is an extension of either the Drupal web test case or Drupal unit test case classes, depending on whether or not you're writing a functional test or a unit test. We're going to be writing a functional test, so we'll extend the Drupal web test case. So I'll start by adding some documentation to my file, and I'll say this contains tests for the hello world module. And then I'm going to create a new class. We'll call this class hello world tests. 
extends Drupal web test case. I can name my test class here pretty much anything I want to. The name isn't really important. I recommend prefixing your class name with the name of your module so that you don't run into any namespace conflicts, and that's just best practice. But you could name it whatever you wanted to. We've got a module, Hello World Tests. In an earlier lesson, we talked a little bit about writing tests, and we said that every test case that we write is an extension of one of the base test classes, in this case, Drupal Web Test Case, and that there are a couple of methods that we need to implement in our test case to ensure that our tests get set up and run properly. Those are the get info and setup methods. Let's start by doing that. So I'm going to create a new public method. It's actually going to be a static method. Like so it's important that we declare this as static, otherwise simple test is going to complain. And this is just going to return an array. The array is going to contain metadata about our test. Metadata about our test case. That array is going to contain just a couple of keys, name, so the name of our test, or the specific test case, a description, and a group. I'm specifically giving this the human readable name, hello world group. So when we look at this in the user interface, we can distinguish between name and group. Normally, I would probably just name these two things the same. Name and group would just be hello world. With that in place, we should actually be able to get Drupal to recognize our test case. There's nothing for it to run, but it should show up. If we switch back to our browser, the first thing I'm going to do is clear the cache. So I'll go to Configuration, Performance, and I'm going to click the Clear All Caches button. This will tell Drupal to go and reread the hello world.info file, locate the hello world.test file, and now know about the existence of the hello world test class. Then if I go to configuration, scroll down, and go to testing, in the list here, I should be able to find hello world. So I've got hello world group, and if I click the arrow to open it, I've got hello world and tests for the hello world module. These correspond directly to the keys that we just set inside of our test cases get info method. You can see here the name, the description, and the group. All right, there is nothing to do in this test yet, so I'm not going to run it. Instead, I'm going to switch back to my editor and add a setup method. We've talked about this a few times, but whenever Drupal runs a set of tests, for each individual test case, a test case being a class like this, hello world tests, so for each test case, Drupal rebuilds the entire environment. It creates a whole new set of tables, it installs Drupal from scratch, it runs the standard installation profile, and then it just starts from there. In order to test our Hello World module, the module needs to be enabled. So we're going to provide a setup function in our test that says, let's enable this module. By default, Drupal doesn't enable the Hello World module. So if we add a setup method to our test case, if it exists, simple test will call it. If it doesn't, it'll skip it. What we're really doing, though, is overriding the parent setup method, which is part of the Drupal web test case. So I'm going to call that parent method so it can do all of the things that it needs to do during setup. In addition, I'm going to pass in an argument. It's an array of all of the modules that I would like to have enabled when my test case is running. So this will say, after you've run the standard installation profile, also enable the hello world module. In future lessons, we'll take a look at other things that you might do in the setup here, but it's all about configuring the environment in which your tests are going to run. So you might do things like enable a module. You also might do things like create the users that you need to navigate your site or create the content that it is that you're trying to test. Of course, we should have some documentation for our function here. So I'll just add a simple doc block that says there are many setup tasks for test case. And then finally, I want to write a test. In order to do that, I need to create a specially named method on this hello world tests class. I'm going to create a new public method and I'm going to call it tests test hello world. I'm going to add a few lines so this is easier to see. The way that this works is that simple test will locate any method on our test class that starts with the prefix test, like so. Test and then any name we want. So ours is test hello world, but it could be test rainbows or test unicorns or whatever we wanted to call it. In a lot of cases, we might have multiple tests that make up an individual test case. 
Right now, we've just got one. So we've got the test method. Simple test will know that this method exists. It will call this method, and it will expect this method to contain some number of assertions that are checked if they pass, this test passes. If they fail, this test fails. Within the test hello world method is where we're effectively driving the simple test browser. We can do things like tell it to navigate to a page using this Drupal get hello world. And once on a page, we can tell the browser to perform one or more assertions. So we're going to say this assert text. The text that I want to assert here is the same as the URL hello world that we navigated to. If I switch back to my browser, do this once more, I can navigate to that page. So I'll go to the home page and then click hello world. So I'm on my page provided by our module. It's got this text. I'm just going to copy and paste it right into our module or into our test because that's what I want to do. I want to assert that this text exists when somebody visits the page. So I'm going to assert text and then I'm going to pass in another message that says page content. I won't go into too much detail about this assert function and how this works because we'll be covering that in much more depth in the next lesson. But the assert here is basically saying look at the contents of the page in this given context, verify that the text exists, and here's the message that I want to use in the log file when you're logging that this test happened and whether or not it passed. When we run our test, this will make a little more sense. This is a really simple example of a test. Navigate to a URL, check that some content exists after installing our module. So I can save that. Let's switch back to our browser. I'm going to go to configuration and then testing. Now I'm going to run the hello world tests. So I'll scroll down, find the hello world group. I'll just run the whole group because we've only got one test right now and click run tests. When I do that, for our hello world test case and any test case that's being run, Simple test will create a whole new Drupal environment. It'll then install Drupal using the standard installation profile and call your test cases setup method. That setup method can do things like enable additional modules, in our case enable the hello world module, and then it'll call any test method or a method that starts with the prefix test which is expected to contain some assertions that are verifying whether or not the functionality of your page works. Looks like ours worked. If I tip this open, you can see the setup worked. It enabled the hello world module. After doing so, it navigated to the URL slash hello world, just like we asked it to. It found a valid response on that page. Here's the verbose output of that. I can click on it and sure enough, our module's been enabled and you can see the content is present. And then it ran our assertion and displayed the log message here. This page content is present. So that's a really simple example of something that we can do with the test. The primary takeaway here is in order to write a test, you need to create a new .test file with a class in it that is an extension of the Drupal web test case. And then include that .test file in your modules.info file in order to ensure that Drupal can find it. Finally, we also need to make sure that each of our test cases provides a static get info method, which returns metadata about our tests, and a setup method, which allows us to perform any additional configuration that is necessary in order to prepare the environment for testing. In the next lesson, we'll look at various different assertions that we can make in a test case.